Okay, the third and final video for lesson number one is the order of operations. Now, the order of operations. This is actually very, very important that you understand the order of operations. And a lot of students will say, well, why do I need to know my order of operations? What difference does it make? Well, let's look at how it can differ. Uh, 6 minus 5 plus, oh, well, let's go minus 4, plus 1. Or 6 minus 4 plus 5. Okay, now. If I do not know the order in which I'm to do that work, I may decide, well, I've always heard I should do addition first. So I'm going to add 4 plus 1 and end up with 6 minus 5, which equals the number 1. Other people will say, well, I've heard you always have to go from left to right. So I'm going to go 6 minus 4, which is 2, add 1 to my 2, and I'm going to get the number 3. Here's another example of the same thing. 6 divided by 2 plus 3. 6 divided by 2 plus 3. No, times 3. I want a multiplication symbol. Okay? One student may say, well, I've always heard you to multiply first. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 3, and I'm going to end up with 6 divided by 6, which equals the number 1. And another student says, well, how about if we do it from left to right? So if I do that, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and times 3 now gives me the number 9. What's the problem? The problem is, if there is no order to what you're given to do, and you don't have any understanding of the order, then everybody is going to get their own answer. And so if everybody gets their own answer and they're all different, then we have no way of knowing which answer is the answer that is needed for this problem. And therefore, because math requires order and we want to be consistent in our answers, we have to have an order that determines what you do and when you do it. So let's first of all, do any of you know what that order is? Yeah, I know. Some of you do know. You're going to tell me it's PEMDAS or maybe GEMDAS or possibly Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, okay? So we have lots of ways to remember what this order is. And so we're going to write that down. P, E, M, D, A, S. And the reason some people use G instead of P is because P stands for the word parentheses. G stands for the word grouping. And in actuality, G is more accurate because parentheses refers to only one grouping symbol, which is that one. But there are other grouping symbols, brackets, braces, and even that division bar, fraction bar. That is also a grouping symbol. This bar here with things on top and things on bottom says you do what's on top, you do what's on bottom, and then you finally do the division at the very end. So this is important to understand that for the PEMDAS, the parentheses refers to a various number of grouping symbols. E stands for the word exponents. What are exponents? Exponents are some number to a power. And this power means that this number is repeated in multiplication the number of times that the power sets. So this base, as we call it, is used in multiplication. So this is 2 times 2 times 2 
which is equal to the number 8. It is not 2 times 3. It is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's important to understand what that word exponents means. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. But there are some textbooks out there, especially in our elementary schools, and some teachers who teach what those textbooks say. And some of those textbooks say you do all the multiplications before you do the divisions. And you do all the subtractions before you do all the additions before you do the subtractions. Just as I did in this one and this one. Which is the incorrect answer. Okay? It's important to understand this is incorrect and this is incorrect. Those are not correct answers. And they follow that rule, do all the multiplications before you do divisions, do all additions before you do subtractions. But that is not correct. These two are on the same level and you do it as you move from left to right in both of these. So therefore, this one was the correct answer and this one was the correct answer. As you can see, math has a lot of application to life. If every one of us in life make up our own rules for society and they are not the same rules for the society as a whole, then that society is going to have chaos. It's not going to be able to function together because you're going to look at somebody else and say, well, you're doing, you can't do that because that's not my rule. And they're going to look at you and say, but you can't do it because that's not my rule. And so this is why society has rules. Just like in math, we have order of operations so that math works in an orderly fashion. And that's why we have societal rules too, so that we can function in an orderly fashion. Okay? So now, let's look at what can happen with these. We've already looked at the basic ones here where we did just addition and subtraction. But what happens when we start getting more and more complex? So, let's look at something like this. Uh, oh, I'm looking for one that I want to do. 6 plus 1 minus 2 minus 3. Now notice we have two different grouping symbols here, two different parts of it. We have a grouping symbol here and a grouping symbol here. We can do both of those. 6 plus 1 is 7. And since we've done what's inside, we don't have to write the grouping symbol anymore. Minus 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. But in this case, I kept the grouping symbol because I have a negative with my 1 and I don't want to lose it. Okay? Now, going back to our integers, the opposite of negative 1 makes a plus 1, and I have 7 plus 1, which is going to yield me an 8. Now, notice, even though this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, I do it in a vertical fashion, because it lets me keep things lined up with what they're doing and where I'm at in my process. Also, this process is a simplification. It is not a solving or finding a solution. We will only get a number for an answer when we only have numbers in what we're simplifying. Okay? So, let's look at another one. How about this one? 6 minus 2 and then 8 minus 12. Now notice, both of these are inside parentheses, and I have a parentheses times. This is a times, because remember that multiplication symbol can be parentheses. And so 6 minus 2 is a positive 4, and I'm going to keep my parentheses on this one because 8 minus 12 is a negative 4. And 4 times a negative 4 is going to yield me a negative 16. 
Why? Because I have one negative and four times four is 16. Now let's look at things that are a little more complex. What if I have something like this? Okay, now notice, I have a grouping symbol inside another grouping symbol. I have a multiplication here, but it's outside all the grouping symbols. And I have a square, and it's outside a grouping symbol. So the first thing I have to do on a problem like this is start in the innermost grouping symbol. So my innermost grouping symbol is my 1 plus 2 which is a 3, since it's not a negative, I'm going to write it as a positive 3. That 3 still has to be squared, because that has to be applied. And these are inside my bracket still. So I'm still working inside a grouping symbol. Now, what is being squared? Remember exponents on my second one we're going to do? So, and it's inside the grouping symbol, so that means I've got to do it next. So that means this is the next thing I do. I'm going to end up with 2 plus 3 times 3, which is 9. And now my 6 still has to come down. Notice how I just keep bringing down everything I haven't used yet. Because it's important to keep it all together. Now, 2 plus 9 is 11. And if I want, I can replace that bracket with a multiplication because that's the only part of the bracket still left to be done. Now, 6 times 11 is 66. So notice on this how we start in the middle, in the, in the most inside part, and you work until you finish each one in the precise order that is required to be done. Now let's look at one more. This one is going to use this last grouping symbol that I introduced you to down there. Okay? So, let's look at it. 2 squared plus 20 plus 12 over 3 squared minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay. Well, we're going to have to start at the top, work on the inside first. So I have 2 squared plus 32, because 20 plus 12 is 32. Down here, I've got my 3 squared minus well, 2 squared on the inside is 4, so that's 4 plus 1. Okay, now we're going to go down to the next level. Don't so, so much room. 2 squared is 4, so 4 plus 32. And if you want, you can just go to the next one and say that's 36, because 4 plus 32 is 36. So you don't have to do top and bottom. You can do all the top and then do all the bottom if you want to. Okay, so here we have 5, so I have 3 squared minus 5. 3 squared is 9, so 9 minus 5 gives me 36 over 4. Now that division indicates 36 divided by 4, which is the number 9. So you see how each section has to be done until you get down to the very last step because this fraction bar, or division bar, is also a grouping symbol that says this all has to be finished before you can apply that division at the very end. Okay, now I hope you don't have any questions, but if you do, you can call me at the number, we can get on Zoom, we can work through things together. Have a wonderful first lesson, and look at your blackboard to see what you need to do, okay?